B bar chords are buggers. They bend your ring finger backwards and they just, they just hurt. So I've developed an exercise for you so you can learn how to do a B bar chord that's nice and clean and consistent and you can have confidence in your B bar chord. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna play it at three different tempos so you can play along with me. All that right after this. This acoustic guitar quick win is brought to you by tonysacousticchallenge.com. The B bar chord is a thorn in a lot of guitar players' sides, myself included, and today we're gonna work on gaining strength and clarity in that B bar chord. But first, a couple items of music theory housekeeping, if you will. The B bar chord is actually an A-shaped bar chord. Let me explain. If I was to make a regular A chord the way that people do, uh, I would essentially be fretting the D, G, and B string on the second fret, and that would be an A chord. Now, if I move this A chord up two frets and played it, it sounds, well, actually doesn't sound too bad, but it doesn't sound the same, because while I'm moving the fretted notes, I'm not moving those open strings, hence where the bar chord enters the picture. That's the shape that we're gonna be working on today. It's an A-shaped B chord. Now, bar chords have two uh, items to describe them. What they actually are, in this case a B chord, and the shape that they're derived from, in this case an A-shaped. So this is an A-shaped B chord. Now, what's exactly the shape? So I'm fretting with my index finger the second fret of the A string, and then my ring finger has the responsibility and the pleasure to fret the D, G, and B string all on the fourth fret. Now I am muting the high E here, so I'm not playing that at all because I just find that easier and quite frankly, it's really hard to hit consistently, so I just took it out of the equation. That's the shape that we're working on. Again, second fret of the A string with the index finger, and then the ring finger frets the D, G, and B string at the fourth fret. Now the exercise that I've chosen to develop this particular chord shape, uh, the first part of it will develop strength and distribution of pressure. What does that mean? Well, let me explain what the first part of the exercise is. First part means we're just gonna hold that shape down and go through and on the quarter note, on the downbeat, one, two, three, four, we're gonna play a downstroke on each of the strings. Starting on the A string, going to the D, the G, the B, and then doubling back from the B to the G, to the D, to the A. And in doing so, we're gonna use kind of this staccato feature. Think of your bar chord here as a button. If you press down on it, you're gonna make sound. If you lift up on it, it's gonna cut the sound off. So for each note, we're gonna play it and then lift up, like so. So that would be on the A string, the D, the G, the B, and then back, uh, turning back around, the B, the G, the D, and the A. And we're gonna do that on the quarter note. So if I was to count with it, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're using that kind of a bouncing feeling, kind of pressure on, pressure off thing to again, feel like where that pressure's actually needed uh, on the certain strings, to, to, to fret the strings, to get actual good sound out of them. Uh, once you're comfortable with that, once you get good clear notes there, you can move to the second part of the exercise, which, which essentially entails holding the entire chord shape down and then picking through it with eighth notes. Well, what does that mean? It sounds like this, and then I'll explain it. So it sounds like this. Sorry, I'm actually doubling up on that high one, so it sounds like this. And that's gonna work on sustained pressure on the chord. So what am I doing there? Well, I'm holding that bar chord down, same bar chord we've been using, and I'm going uh, down on the A string, up on the D, down on the G, up on the B, back down on the B, up on the G, down on the A, I'm sorry, down on the D, and up on the A. 
So if I was to count along with that, it would sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, and if I was to say the pick direction, it would be down, up, 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 down, up. Now, the difference between the halves of this exercise, the first half of the exercise is all about maintaining and distributing pressure accordingly so that your bar chord sounds nice and clean. The second part of the exercise is all about sustained pressure. Essentially, the strength and stamina to hold that bar chord down and then, of course, be able to pick through it and still maintain good, clean, clear, sustaining notes. With this exercise, it's crucial that you go slow. And I say that because it's not about how fast you play through it. It's about a good, clean sounding bar chord. And if you don't have one currently, you can develop it with this exercise. I start out going at 40 beats per minute, move to 60 and then 80. So it's, they're not crazy fast tempos. They're just enough uh, effective tempos so that you can really focus on what matters. Clear notes and good solid pressure and distribution of pressure when you're holding that bar chord down. Now, if this exercise becomes too much at all, just break it up in half. Do the staccato quarter note portion first, get comfortable with that, and then move to the eighth note portion. There's no need to do them both back to back, but for the sake of presentation, I did that so you can get the pressure distribution portion, and of course, the sustained kind of stamina exercise at the end. So I wish you the best of luck on this A-shaped B bar chord. And, uh, you know, just be sure to stretch out because this is going to be, it's going to be tough on the old, uh, not only index finger, but the ring finger as well. Good luck to you. I hope you really dug this lesson, and if it helped you out, please let me know by leaving a comment below. And of course, if I forgot anything that would help your fellow guitar players out, you can put that below as well. And one more thing, if you like this lesson, you're absolutely gonna love my five-day acoustic guitar challenge. It's a brand new acoustic guitar exercise delivered to your inbox for five days straight. It's gonna help bolster brand new techniques, really ramp up your practice habit, and give you stuff to add to your playing nearly immediately. All you have to do to sign up is click the link in the description or here in the video, and within 10 seconds, you could be playing your very first acoustic guitar challenge exercise. I hope you try it out, and I can't wait to see you on the next lesson. If you like this lesson, you're absolutely gonna love my five-day acoustic guitar challenge. It's a brand new acoustic guitar exercise delivered to your inbox for five days straight. It's gonna help bolster brand new techniques, really ramp up your practice habit, and give you stuff to add to your playing nearly immediately. All you have to do to sign up is click the link in the description or here in the video, and within 10 seconds, you could be playing your very first acoustic guitar challenge exercise. I hope you try it out, and I can't wait to see you on the next lesson.